Good morning, tubers, and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Danielle, and this is Discover Recipe. If you like anything to do with animals or travel or airstreams, well, this is the place for you, and you should definitely hit that little subscribe button. Hit it. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Uh, right now it is January 2023 and I am in Hardville, Wyoming at an animal sanctuary called Kindness Ranch. As you can imagine in Wyoming and in winter it is very very cold and being that this is my third winter in the Airstream I figured I would share a few tips and tricks that I do in order to keep this little baby a little warmer. First things first, everybody's going to ask, what do I live in? This is a 2021 30 foot flying cloud. Um, it has the bedroom in the back and it's a queen bed. Not that that matters. Maybe it does for placement of things. I'm sure most of the country remembers Mr. Elliot, the beautiful winter storm Christmas 2022 that swept the country from coast to coast. We hit minus 56 degrees around here, wind chill. And surprisingly enough, I managed to stay pretty warm in here. I did lose water. I have a Camco heated hose, which is um, rated for minus 20 degrees wind chill. And being that we hit minus 56, I was kind of in the SOL department. With that said, I did disconnect the heated hose and filled up my fresh water tank and went on it. But at day two, that also froze because the side where the tank is was being hit directly with the wind and it was gruesome. Um, I did not expect the fresh water tank not to freeze, so I actually got prepared. I had a five gallon bucket in the shower of water that I took from the barn and I was able to brush my teeth, wash my hands. I did cooking with very little dishes, meaning pretty much pre-made stuff. The heat sources. I don't know specifics of which exact furnace that this Airstream uses. I have looked it up. I have not been able to find it, but in the meantime, if I do find it, I will post something here. Um, but the furnace runs off of propane it actually works when you're not connected to shore power. So all you really need is some, you don't even have need to have the inverter on. You just have to be on, I guess. And honestly, I don't love the furnace probably for personal preferences. I have a lot of allergies and the furnace really aggravates my nose as you can hear. Yeah. It is also super loud and I hate having it on. Plus it uses a lot of propane and it does heat the space really well, really quickly. That is a given. But the vents are spread throughout the floor. There is like four in here, I think, and one in the bathroom and one in the bedroom. Um, and in zone two, which is the bedroom for me, uses a heat pump. Heat pumps are only optimal when the outside temperature is 45. And so honestly, I probably never use it. Instead, I like using space heaters. I actually have two. And I know I might get some flack for this, but this is what works for me. I do keep the furnace on during the day at 66 and at night at 60 so that if the space heaters are not able to keep up then it kicks in to give it supplemental heat and again that works really well which it really only did when it was really cold that one storm minus 56. Um, I don't have them running all the time and if I'm using something else like if I'm making coffee in the morning or using my air fryer or the hair dryer then obviously I turn them off to make sure I do not overload the breaker. However, it is important to keep in mind that Airstream uses the same exact electrical and plumbing materials as they would in a real house. And so as long as you're on the 50 amp um, shore power and it's good shore power, I think you should not have an issue. However, before using any of these in your rigs, it is important that you make sure you look up the max wattage per item. Each rig is different. Some are max of a thousand watts, others max of 1500 watts. And honestly, most pace heaters kind of fit right there. So you need to make sure you do your research and pick the right materials for your setup. The windows. Um, now I am actually working on a video called five things you should know before buying an Airstream. And one of the topics I cover is the windows. Um, that being said, the windows are incredibly uninsulated and really do let the cold air in. And so because of that, it is very important to usually have your curtains closed and your shade and your shades down because that provides actually quite a bit of insulation. However, if you are going to go in extreme cold temperatures, you might want to take a few extra precautions. And for this, I have props and ta these. So when you order food online, frozen food, it comes in these insulated boxes and these insulated boxes are basically insulated with these, which is um, some interesting padding, which actually apparently you're just supposed to dissolve in water, compost, burn foam panels. It's a green kind of foam. 
Um, because of that, I actually keep it wrapped in plastic. And I use these on the curtains in the bedroom because it's curtains versus the shades. These are pretty thick, and so if I put them on the window with the shades, which I can, um, then it's kind of bulky though, and I don't really like that. You can also put it on the outside. So you basically would have to open these and put it in the space between the glass and the screen. Um, but I don't really want to do that because I want to be able to open the windows when I need to and be able to look outside like today. Beautiful snowy day, I'm sure you've noticed. So for the windows in here, I like to use these. These are um, just, you know, basic window coverings. I got them from Ace Hardware. You can get them at Lowe's. You can get them just about anywhere. And they are kind of the perfect fit to where you can really like puzzle them. Um, with this window, because you have these latches, which is to open and close the glass part, um, you can only use a short amount, which does mean though that it's really well insulated. And then you just pull this shut and it stays in place. And um, for the bottom part, I have a smaller one, which I cut, which was a big one that I cut into multiple pieces and I have some in the bedroom to do the bottom part of the window, the oval shape. So that way, if it's a nice day one day and I want to have the window open and look outside, then I can do so without having to go outside, open the window, take the, the foamy thingy off and so on and so forth. I do this for this window and these two windows, the kitchen windows. Yes, that's my script. I'm trying to follow one. <laughs> now for the back window over here. Now these are kind of like, I guess, double pane you can say, because there's an inside window and an outside window, but it still lets a lot of air out. And this is where I love this. This is the perfect height that it fits in between the top and bottom track. So I can actually slide the curtains open and shut still. And so what I like to do is I put it on just one side, the side where people can actually see in, unless it's super cold, then obviously I have the whole thing done. But right now, the way I'm set up, people can see in on this side, but not the other side. And so I put it over here. Let's move the cut and pull out of the way. Okay, I'm probably just gonna speed this part up. you can just slide the curtains right above it and it works perfect so it literally takes two to go the whole way across and unless it is super cold I usually like I said just have one that way I can have some sunlight coming from over here because it is nice to have some sunlight sometimes now another thing that I use these for now we all know heat rises and rises and escapes really easily through window we have these guys skylights there's two of them there's two of them so i use these nifty little pads over here put it in here and close this right up as you can see it got really dark really quickly so as you can imagine a lot less heat escapes now because of that this one is also one that i usually do that was actually the first one i figured out that this would actually work so i have this long one that i got from a different kind of food i got mailed to me and that one can be a little awkward but there you go so now basically you can't feel the cold coming in and if you put your hand in between whatever padding you've used in the, the outdoor window you can feel a clear difference in temperature anybody who has an airstream will tell you their least favorite part is probably the door the door just sucks and i will not go into that because that could be a whole episode on itself that being said, the door does let in, let in quite a bit of air. I can literally feel it. Oh yeah, you do have to slam it shut. It is a very well known fact that you have to slam your door shut. And so I highly recommend you not do so with the handle because I don't trust the handle. So I usually hold it right here, which is about the best midpoint without trying to yank anything else. Um, anywho, that being said, you can feel the cold wind coming in through here. Like literally it oozes it. And what I have found, I cannot believe my luck, but this little guy, again, is like the perfect fit. So to put it in here, you split the two doors open. I'm sorry, there's a lot of snow out here and I'm trying to stand weirdly. Look at that, perfect fit. Basically, you split open the two sides of the door, you slide in 
the visor in between the two. Keep this on top so you can hold it in place, but honestly, you know, it doesn't really move. Now for additional insulation, I got this cheapo, but pretty decently nice, um, blackout insulated curtain from Walmart. And basically I tried to get something that I could, you know, have it glued up here. So, but I didn't want something permanent. So I looked at Velcro, but Velcro does not stick really well to this, nor does it stick really well to this. And so that was a bummer. But then again, I realized, you know what, there's a gap. Every door has a gap. I'm just using it to my advantage. Don't tell me I'm starting a gap. I'm not starting a gap. I'm just using my gap to my advantage. But here again, open the door so you don't squash your fingers. And I literally do the same. I tuck in the top in between the two doors. This one needs help to be held in place. And so I use binder clips. Do have to separate the doors again for this. And I do three. Now the only downside of doing this with the binder clips is that it does compress the gasket in those weak spots. And so technically not really good for the gasket, but those are really easy to replace. And so I'm not too worried about it. I'll deal with it in the summertime. But honestly, I think I'm going to keep doing this in the summertime because it will also help keep some of the hot air out and the cold air in. Slam your door shut. <laughs> And there you go. Now I did get one that's a little too long, which is going to work to my advantage. Now this will really help when I have a lot of blowing snow coming in here because that did happen. I will show you pictures. But basically I tuck it at the bottom and then put a bunch of towels to weigh it down. And then over here I take this side and tuck it in over here. As you can tell, all the weak parts of the door are covered. And you can go with some colorful stuff because it's really not much to decorate in an Airstream. So it's really hard to find a way to put your special touch to things. This can be a way. And honestly, this was a huge game changer for me. And I highly recommend you find a way to make this work for you at least in one way or another. Now, another really important thing to insulate are the floors. The floors can actually get super duper cold. Anybody that lives on a travel trailer in or van will tell you that the floors could be literally at 30 degrees. And obviously one way to combat that is using rugs. The first rug coming into the house is one I don't really love. And this one just catches a lot of the snow and mud and whatnot. And then I have those other ones that I like a little bit more. When it is super snowy, wet, rainy, muddy, I do lay down tons of towels that I have just for this on the floor. That way it catches all that moisture. And then the floors aren't so hard to clean after the storm. Um, with that said, I'm sure you could do this a lot easier with just one big long kind of run a rug that goes the whole length of the thing and maybe get one for the entrance that's bigger however I like that they are smaller and that I can just take them and bring them to whatever laundromat and get them washed because I actually wash them almost every other week. Now I have, now I have two outside compartments. One is under um, the main couch which I cannot access from the inside um, however I do put a bunch of this inside of it on the outside the one under the bed I can easily access from the inside and so anytime you lift the bed the platform you can feel all that air oozing in and it is actually super cold I actually don't have a lot of stuff under there I just have a lot of space in here for just me and so I have taken a lot of these and just lined the whole compartment from the outside just to keep more of that cold air out now the condensation can get really bad the windows will kind of like steam up and that will actually freeze over and the walls closer to the ground in some areas will also do that don't panic it's just cold turn your furnace on and that will go away pretty quickly but do put some towels down or something because depending on how cold it was it might accumulate so the platform the mattress sits on is actually probably the worst. The heat from my body heat sleeping on the mattress and the cold coming in from below the bed really creates this pocket of condensation, which is actually somewhat gross. And I'm not going to show it to you because it is gross, but I will maybe do a video on how I deal with that problem because it is a problem that you do have to deal with if you're going to be here full time for the winter. If you are staying put for the winter, I highly recommend you find a way to skirt your rig. I looked up the inflatable skirting that they make for Airstreams and <laughs> uh, for a 30 foot it's like $2,700 and I was before shipping and handling. I didn't even want to know what that was going to be because it weighs a ton. Um, but I will post it right here if you are interested in looking into it. 
But for right now, since we are on a farm, I have decided to use straw bells and I put it all around and it's actually really helped with not only am I not rocking as much when it's super windy outside, because obviously I have completely cut any airflow going from the bottom, but the floors have been able to stay warmer and I have used a lot less propane with the heater. I have, I was able to tell within the first day of having the straw bells nice. put around well, there you have it, folks. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode on how to stay warm in one of these tin buckets. And I hope you learned something. And if you feel like you have something you might be able to teach me, I would be happy to learn about it in the comment section below. So do leave a comment and maybe a thumbs up and maybe a subscribe and maybe a say. <laughs> I'm awkward. I know. Because she pulled the same one. Oh, you see, yeah. You see, yeah.